Hello everyone, today I wanted to choose 10 duels from the original Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters series that I personally feel are the best of the best, the creme de la creme if you will, in my personal opinion of course. I'm going to choose my top 10 duels based on a variety of different things, but the biggest ones being things like the stakes that are involved in the duel, the twists and turns that happen throughout, and of course just how hype the duel was in general. I want you all to keep in mind one big thing though, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters series it spanned over 200 episodes, and as such, I could very easily have turned this video into a top 20. But, I wanted to challenge myself to just picking a top 10, so I apologise if your favourite moment didn't appear on the list, but you can always leave it in the comment section below to let everybody know why that moment is special to you. So yeah, regardless, I would like to invite you all to my top 10 duels of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters. I can see everything in your mind. Your hopes, your dreams, even your fears. And what you fear most right now is me. Let's start with a big one, shall we? The climactic duel between Yugi Moto, the king of games, and the big bad millennium item wielding final villain of the first season, who, keep in mind, is also the creator of the Duel Monsters card game, Maximilian Pegasus. In this duel, Pegasus has the souls of Yugi's grandpa, his rival Kaiba's and Kaiba's younger brother Mokuba's souls all trapped within cards. So it is clear from the get-go that the stakes for Yugi and Yami are very high. However, they're also really high for Pegasus as well. You see, despite his outwardly evil persona, he isn't evil for the sake of it. No, he has a goal. He wants to use all of the Millennium items which he believes will be able to resurrect his long lost love, Cecilia. In honesty, despite the number 10 position in top 10 duels, Pegasus will always be my favourite Yu-Gi-Oh! villain in all of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters series, simply because of his personality and his character. I mean, he was this unusual, flamboyant character who talked in a really unique way, addressing Yugi and Kaiba as Yugi boy and Kaiba boy. As you can tell, he's very fun to impersonate. I summon my Toon Dark Magician Girl. I attack you directly. I'll stop. It's fun though. Give it a go. Kaiba! Not only that though, Pegasus is also one of the few final villains to a Yu-Gi-Oh! series that used a deck that wasn't comprised of like powerful dragon monsters or sinister fiend monsters, but instead his deck was filled with something he loved. Cartoons, aka the Toon Monsters. Yes, he did have Relinquished in his deck, as well as Thousand Eyes Restrict, but to me they represented his Millennium Eyes power rather than his own. In terms of why the actual duel is amazing, well, the unsurmountable odds stacked against Yugi and the way he overcomes them are a testament to his skills and resourcefulness. You have to keep in mind as well though that back then, there wasn't really any solid rules to the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. Basically, if you could talk your way out of something or if something made just enough sense, it was logical, then you could kind of get away with anything. So keep that in mind a little bit later, but the first big obstacle in the duel was Pegasus's Millennium Eye. This eye had the ability to read your mind. Yami was able to solve this by switching places with Yugi in order to stop Pegasus from seeing the cards in his hand. The second hurdle in the duel was how his Toon monsters were able to hide within their Toon world, but Yugi was able to overcome this again. The final blockade was Thousand Eyes Restrict, a monster so powerful it has spent the majority of its real world life on the ban list. With Thousand Eyes Restrict on the field, Pegasus could basically take any of Yugi's monsters that he wanted to. And while it sounds ridiculous when you say it out loud, the the way that Yuki gets over this monster is pretty clever. He uses a combination of his Karibo monster and his Multiply spell card to flood the field, causing Thousand Eyes, Thousand Eyes to absorb them all, blinding him in the process. Now with its eyes averted, Yugi was free to unleash his Magician of Black Chaos and end the duel in his favour. Pretty ingenious really. Not only that, but the icing of the cake to really cement this duel was that Pegasus, after all that he had done, was a man of his word. Even after defeat, he honoured what he said and freed the souls of those he had sealed, making for me personally a truly great duel. All right, Joey, you asked for my best and I intend to give it. Yugi, I won't insult you by giving you anything less than my all. I'm gonna come at you hard right from the start. Seeing two best friends who have been side by side throughout the entire journey of a story be forced to duel against each other, 
Well, makes for some really spicy duels. In fact, it would even result in a pretty cool song. We are closer than brothers. Now we have to fight each other. As best friends, Yugi and Joey know each other's strengths and weaknesses. But also, due to this factor, they know what each other are fighting for. So to defeat them requires true dedication to one's own goal. Yugi and Joey have had two really big duels throughout the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters series. The first duel is where the two were able to reach the finals of Duelist Kingdom. Both had something that they were fighting for. For Yugi, it was his grandfather's soul. For Joey, it was for his sister's eye operation so it should be able to see once again. The two would again duel later during the Battle City Tournament, when Joey was being mind controlled by Marek. And while that duel is great and the stakes, well, they couldn't be higher since usually death is censored in the show, but the censorship team didn't seem to find any problem with two people being strapped to anchors that when they lose, drags them down to the dark, crushing ocean depths. Okay. I mean, it was a pretty awesome duel. However, in my opinion, their first duel holds a special place because it just shows how far Joey has come as a character. Using all the new skills and cards he has acquired throughout the tournament, now where we would usually cross our fingers in hopes that Joey's luck-based cards would go in his favor, this time we weren't so sure as we wanted both of our characters to win. The duel has many twists and turns and some really iconic moments, but towards the end of the duel, Joey manages to pull himself into a position of power, taking the lead in the duel. In fact, he was in a situation where he could absolutely win the duel. It all came down to the success of his Time Wizard card, a card given to him by Yugi himself at the start of the tournament. After a tense moment, the Time Wizard is successful and it all seems that Joey has won. However, it is revealed not everything is as it seems. Yugi, knowing that Joey has the Time Wizard card in his deck, sided his Dark Sage into his own. Dark Sage could only be summoned by the effect of Time Wizard, and because of this, Yugi was able to win the duel and go on to win the tournament and save both his grandpa and Joey's sister. Call it an unfair play by Yugi, call it a clever tech by Yugi, I'll let you guys be the judge, but siding is allowed in tournaments, so I think it's fair. Regardless though, after the effort Joey put in with this duel and Yugi's conviction to win, it's a memorable duel and one of my favorites. And now that my mighty queen's done powering up, it's the end of Joey Whaler once and for all! No! Going from Joey losing a duel to Joey consecutively winning some duels. This number eight spot, in reality, is actually all of the duels Joey plays throughout the Battle City. Joey goes against all of Yugi's old challengers from Duelist Kingdom, proving, like Yugi, he was capable of winning against them all. With each win as well, he gains a new card. And even when put up against Duelists who are clearly cheating, he's able to triumph without the guidance of Yugi. In fact, he wins against two cheaters. But I want to focus on a very specific slimy cheater. That of course is the duel between Joey and Weevil. This duel is steeped in an unresolved grudge, since Weevil not only is an annoying parasite, but he's also the one responsible for Yugi's Exodia cards being thrown into the ocean. I know these cards weren't Joey's, but Joey, as Yugi's best friend and a friend to Solomon Muto as well, who originally owned the cards, I imagine he took it very personally. He threw himself off the side of a moving ship to try and recover the cards. So I think there's a bit of amniosity there. To me, what makes this duel memorable is the lengths Weevil goes to just to get a slight advantage in a duel. The guy hires some random to bump into Joey just before the duel and slip Parasite Parasite into his deck. With that card, all of Joey's monsters are transformed into insect types giving Weevil an advantage throughout the duel. Honestly, probably one of my favorite things about Yu-Gi-Oh! is when someone is cheating, but the main character, without having to cheat themselves, is still able to win and triumph. It's a Cinderella story. It's an uphill battle. It's, it's awesome. This duel, in fact, is the very definition of if you cheat, you cheat yourself. Joey, through his hard work and dedication, has gained skills to overcome his opponents. Weevil, who has refused to learn and chose a path of cheating, did no such thing. And as such, he remains stagnant and is why he ultimately loses against Joey. And with this win, Joey is able to take Weevil's best card, Insect Queen. I say a lot of nice things about Joey, but his deck building skills, oh my god. Legendary Fisherman and Insect Queen, they don't go together. Why would you put them in your deck? Jinzo, fair play, a pretty good card, but yeah, just work on that please, Joey. Still 
What is better than two best friends being forced to duel each other? Why, it's two rivals being forced to pair up against a greater evil. Yes, combining the strengths that they usually use against each other, now against someone else, is absolutely epic. Honestly, it was hard for me to decide which tag duel to put in this spot out of Yugi and Kaiba versus Darts, or Yugi and Kaiba versus Loomis and Umbra. Although the Darts duel does make for a really awesome moment because he is Honestly, a truly powerful foe. Kaiba is unable to see this duel through to the end and passes the reins over to Yugi halfway through. However, with the Loomis and Umbra duel, he's able to make it to the end thanks to teamwork. And, well, Kaiba doesn't make it easy to use teamwork in this duel. For a bit of context, the stakes of this duel are pretty damn high as the loser, well, they will plummet to their death should their life points hit zero. Not only that though, but unbeknownst to Kaiba and Yugi, Loomis and Umbra have hidden earpieces, making them able to converse with one another to cheat. This duel is a roller coaster of emotions. It starts out with Yugi and Kaiba basically doing their own thing, Kaiba relying on power, Yugi relying on all these kinds of tactics. However, it turns out there's something better than those two individual strengths, which is teamwork, something that they both lack. Yugi realizes this and tries to coax a bit of teamwork out of Kaiba. But he's having none of it. We begin to see a glimmer of hope when Yugi throws his Karibo in front of Kaiba to keep him safe. And then Kaiba, to pay a debt, is how he puts it, sacrifices one of his monsters to save Yugi. So we're starting to get there. But of course, they relapse. However, after a little bit more coaxing and seeing the values of teamwork, Yugi is able to help Kaiba get out not only his blue eyes white dragon through some very clever, sneaky wordplay between the two. Due to your sloppy dueling, I can't summon it to the field. It's better off in the graveyard. Mm. It sounds like Kaiba wants to discard his hand. But they are also able to get out Obelisk the Tormentor and absolutely obliterate the opponent. Yes, seeing the teamwork emerge between these two characters and Kaiba's Sundere style slow acceptance of using teamwork. Honestly, it's one of my favorite duels in the series and I've always liked it. Behold. The ultimate five card combination that makes me completely indestructible. This is the first duel Yugi faces against an Egyptian god, which will soon become his future boss monster for the remainder of Battle City. This duel is amazing because in hindsight, we now know how powerful Egyptian god cards are. They basically have an immunity to monster effects, spell effects, and trap effects, only really being able to be bested by another god or something with incredible attack power. Strings in this duel builds his deck entirely around Slifer, making it so that Yugi doesn't have a slight chance of besting his attack power. He does this by creating an amazing combo to keep Slifer's attack as high as possible, even making it so that he can have unlimited cards in his hand. Combine this with his ability to keep drawing cards meant that he had an Egyptian god at one point in the duel with 26,000 attack points. Clearly, this was way more than Yugi could handle. However, this is Yugi Moto we're talking about, and Yugi Moto uh, always uh, finds a way. It was Jurassic Park. I Whatever. To the very end of the duel, Slife of the Sky Dragon was unkillable. However, Strings was not. Yugi cleverly creates an infinite loop situation so that Strings has to keep drawing every time his monster revives because of Strings' own card, Card of Safe Return. And though Slifer keeps growing in power, his deck begins to dwindle until finally it runs out of cards. And thus, Yugi wins and in the process adds Slifer the Sky Dragon to his arsenal. Now I activate the seal of Orichalcos! What have I done? Controversial this one for a number of reasons. One, it's Yugi losing. Two, it happens during a filler arc. And three, there is no three, but I really like the seal of Orichalcos arc and I really like this duel and I like Raphael. So that's why it's here. Up until this point, Yugi has never lost a duel without external factors being involved, like Pegasus having a time limit on a duel, Kaiba forcing him to surrender, or surrendering on purpose to Rebecca. Those ones, we don't really count them. This time, 
It was real. Raphael hates Yami Yugi. He uses this duel as a means to prove that Yugi is, in fact, evil. As at some point in the duel, Raphael purposefully gives his Seal of Orichalcos card to Yugi. Context, the Seal of Orichalcos was a field spell used in this season that if you activated it and you lost the duel, you'd lose your soul. Pretty much. However, since Raphael had given this card to Yugi, then that meant that this duel was not to the death, but just a simple duel to test each other. However, when the Pharaoh gets backed into a corner and it doesn't seem like there's any out to the situation, he turns to the Seal of Arikalkos. He rejects the warnings of his partner and embraces the darkness, making him the one to turn the duel into a game with real stakes. All because... He just doesn't want to lose. Honestly, it's usually pretty cool seeing protagonists go evil, but here it's just a little bit sad, really. He insults his monsters and begins to play recklessly. In Raphael's eyes, he's every bit the monster that Darts had told him he was. And in fact, if we turn our eye to Raphael, he has quite the tragic backstory as well. Though censored, of course, in the dub internationally, the original version, he lost his entire family on a shipwreck crew. Caused by darts, of course, the cards that he had kept throughout his entire life were worn and damaged because he cared for them so much, like his own family. The fact that he had kept all these deteriorating cards for such a long time really proves that, well, Raphael was never really a bad person. And thus, the duel ends with Raphael unleashing his guardian, Iatos, to deal the final blow. And after little Yugi sacrifices himself and has his soul ripped from his body, this duel ends in a very dark tone. What a cliffhanger. I really like it. Gandora, activate your special ability! Boundless Giga Rays! Picking this number four spot was really hard. I knew it was going to be a Bakora duel, but I didn't know which one because they're all just so good. Marek versus Bakora, great. Yugi versus Bakora, good duel, back at the start. Yugi versus Bakora again, very, very good. And little Yugi versus Bakora, solid. Which one will I go for? Well, you already know. Yes, although I think the Battle City duels between Yami and Yugi are great, Destiny Board is such an awesome card, it's such a great duel. I wish I could put it on this spot. But the duel with little Yugi against Bakora, it just shows how much little Yugi has grown as a character. No, I've written a different thing for this position, but now I'm saying it out loud, I'm taking it off. I'm gonna go with the Battle City one with Yugi versus Bakura Battle City. I'll quickly get my points out of the way why this was originally Little Yugi. Yugi duels on his own. We get to see Yugi's, Little Yugi's real deck for the first time without the Pharaoh. We get to see his Silent Magician cards. We get to see Silent Swordsman's. They level up, which is reflective of Yugi growing throughout the course of the series as well. So that's a bit clever. That's why it could get a spot. And also we get to see Gandora, the dragon of destruction at the end. Yugi's actual ace monster, which is completely out of left field. It's so weird to see Yugi with a different kind of ace monster. I'll give it to the Destiny board duel. I like the atmosphere. I like the Sanctuary field spell. I like Destiny board again. It was the first cards I ever bought and it's just so cool. And then he kills the Dark Necrophia and then the spirit goes into one of his monsters and it jumbles around. It's just so awesome. I'm just gonna stop there. I could just, I'm just gonna waffle about this one. They're both good. I'll let you pick whichever one you want. Also, final point, this duel has the coolest summoning animation for an Egyptian god card. When Slifer is summoned in this duel, holy hell, it is awesome. Just the way it wraps around the blimp as well. Epic. Hurry up and call your attack, Joey! I... Joey, no! Oh, oh no! <laughs> Joey Wheeler versus Marek Ishtar. View said to me at the very start of the Battle City tournament, who would win in a duel between Marek and Joey? I'd be like, it's gonna be Marek, isn't he? He's the final villain. But this duel it had me questioning whether, oh my God, he might do it. Joey, the guy who at the start of the series was an absolute trash duelist, grown and grown and grown throughout the story, getting all the way to the Battle City, getting all the way to the Battle City semi-finals, 
goes against the main antagonist, Marek Ishtar. To Marek, Joey is but a stepping stone. He just has to breeze through this, get to the Pharaoh for the real final battle. What he doesn't expect is for a real challenge. Marek, to be fair, is in control of almost every aspect of the duel, even plunging it into a shadow realm so monsters destroyed are tethered to their host, and as such they receive real damage too. He also incorporates a burn strategy, playing cards like Lava Golem to burn Joey Wheeler's health down and inflict real damage to him too. However, Joey, with his collective experience and cards that he has gained throughout the series, begins to fight back. Marek is even forced to use his Egyptian God card against Joey. With what seems like Joey on the ropes, Marek goes for a final attack. It would seem as if Marek has won the duel. However, to the shock of Marek, Joey survives. This nobody is now on the cusp of ending this tournament. Even Seto Kaiba acknowledges Joey's strength in this moment. I must admit, Wheeler's performance today was quite impressive. Perhaps he's not the third-rate amateur I thought he was. All Joey needs to do is declare his attack to win. However, as we all know, fate doesn't have this in store for Joey. After pushing past his limits, Joey collapses from all the damage he has endured throughout the duel. Ending the duel with Marek winning, not through skill, but due to a technicality. Marek walks away from this duel utterly shaken at how close he came to being defeated. To me, this is the pinnacle of Joey's strength, and I would have been happy if Joey won this duel, and it just ended with just Yugi and Joey having a fun final duel, but such a shame. Controversial, I know, the final duel of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monster series, the duel people say they most likely cried at because it was so emotional, it was so awesome. But the matter of fact is, this and the number one position, they're both in first place, to me personally. But I can't have 3-1-1, can I? Because that's not allowed. So I've decided that just by a thimble, I think I want this one in second place. The Pharaoh now knows his name and he wants to go home. The only way he can do this is by being bested in a duel. But who will stand up to the challenge? Why? little Yugi will, of course. Yugi, who has been riding the coattails of Yami Yugi throughout the entire series, is now able to shine and show how much he has grown throughout the series. At the start of the series, when he solved the Millennium Puzzle, he made a wish. He wished for friends, and that is what he got. And through these friends, he was able to build a deck, build his strengths, and conquer the most powerful duelists ever fathomed. Someone with the ability to will a card to the top of his deck and draw it. That is how powerful the Pharaoh is. But this boy, this Yugi, he's able to win. There's so many great moments in this duel. Basically everything I was saying about the Bakura duel could apply to this one. He uses level monsters that reflect how he's grown over time. He whips out his Gandora, the Dragon of Destruction. However, the thing that wins in this duel is the fact that he knows the Pharaoh so well. He knew the Pharaoh would bring his Monster Reborn back because, well, he relied on it so much throughout the series. So being able to counter his Monster Reborn was just a nice way to finally win the duel. The icing on the cake, if you will, is the fact that we have seen people go against the Egyptian gods one at a time, sometimes two every now and then, but never has anyone been able to defeat three Egyptian gods together until today. Yugi conquers Obelisk, he conquers Slifer, and he conquers Ra. It's amazing. It's awesome. And when the Pharaoh leaves and he tells Yugi that a champion shouldn't be on his knees. Yugi, a champion doesn't belong on his knees. You achieved a great victory for us both. And he gives him that thumbs up as he goes through the gates to the afterlife. Ah, oh, it gets you. Dark Paladin attack! And finally, at number one, I have gone for Yugi versus Seto Kaiba, Clash in the Colosseum. First of all, the name is awesome. I love Clash in the Colosseum. Second, this duel spans over six episodes. Yeah, there's a little bit of filler in there. I'm not going to lie, a bit of waffle between characters, but so much happens in this duel. There's so many twists, there's so many turns, and this duel, to me, is 
perfect duel. And I'll tell you why. These two characters were the rivalry that kicked off this series. And this duel, with its flows and twists, really shows everything about the characters that you need to know. At this point in the series, it is the semi-finals of the Battle City. Yugi is in possession of the Egyptian god Slypher, while Kaiba is in possession of Obelisk the Tormentor. The winner will face Marik Ishtar in the final and effectively be the one who has the chance to save the world and inherit all three god cards. The duel begins with Kaiba and Yugi getting out some new cool cards like XYZ Dragon Cannon with Yugi getting out cards like Jack, Queen and King's Knight. Kaiba goes for the Obelisk play but Yugi counters this with his Light Force Sword giving a cheeky grin. There's so many cheeky grins in this episode. I love it. It's They're having fun. It's important duel next duel on is for the fate of the world but this duel you know they're having fun they love this competitive banter kaiba does something unexpected and steals yugi's slifer but yugi steals it back after this both are able to get out their egyptian gods and they battle they have an epic battle with their ultimate ultimate monsters but both are destroyed we get a little vision of the past how they're both tied together through fate and whatnot yeah, they, they, that's that however what i like next is the fact they've gone from some powerful cards to their ultimate gods and now they're going back to their original ace monsters kaiba gets out his blue eyes white dragon yugi gets out his dark magician and they fight again then Kaiba gets out his Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, and then Yugi gets out Joey's Red Eyes Black Dragon. An individual solo power versus the collective power of friendship on the other side. Yugi is then able to get out one final monster, his Dark Paladin. He defuses Kaiba's Blue Eyes Ultimate and destroys all the monsters in a single attack, which looks amazing by the way. And with this blow, he's able to win, taking Kaiba's Obelisk the Tormentor, the duel, and I think our hearts as well. 